Hi everyone, welcome to this presentation. Today we are going to see how to create a hysteresis controller for LTS bytes. In this presentation we will start with an introduction, then we will present the schematic diagram of the hysteresis controller. We will show how to implement this controller in LTS Spice, and finally, we will present several LTS Spice simulations to verify the correct operation of the controller. Here we have the back converter operating under hysteresis control. So the operation is very simple. We measure the current through the inductor at this point and we send this information to the hysteresis comparator here. We have two levels, the peak value of the current and the valley value of the current. And by comparison of the current with these two levels, we generate the gate voltage uh, for the switch here. So here on the right, we have the waveforms. This is the current through the inductor. So the operation is very simple. Once the switch is on here, the current through the inductor is increasing. Once the current uh, through the inductor reaches the maximum value, the peak value, then the switch is turned off by the hysteresis comparator. So the current is going to decrease linearly. And when the current reaches the minimum value, the valley value IV, then the comparator is going to activate again the switch. So we are going to start again and we continue in this way. So this is the response that we need for our comparator. This is the gate voltage, the output of the comparator as a function of the current through the inductor. We have the valley current, the peak current. So if the current is below the value value, the gate is going to be activated. And when the switch is activated, we are comparing the current with this value here, the peak value. So the current will be increasing. And when the current reaches this maximum value, IP, then the gate goes zero. So the switch is turned off. So the current is going to decrease until reaching the IV value. So the switch is turned on again and go on. This way we are going to operate the converter under hysteretic control. So we are going to have these two control parameters only. In this case, we have only as control parameter the peak current and the valley current. Of course, we are not defining here nor the T on time or the switching period. So this is a variable switching frequency operation and also the duty cycle is a variable. We are not controlling the duty cycle and the only parameters that we have are the peak current and the valley current. And with this, we can say that the average current through the inductor is going to be IP plus IV divided by 2. And therefore, the output voltage is going to be equal to this value, IP plus IV divided by 2 times the resistance. So with our control parameters, IP and IV, we can control the output voltage. We have already seen how to implement a hysteresis comparator in this previous video, LTS Spice number 12. But in this case, we want to have the levels of the hysteresis comparator as inputs and not as parameters. So here we have the two levels for the peak value and the valley value. And then we use two comparators and one SR flip-flop to implement the hysteresis comparator. This is the input corresponding to the current through the inductor that we are going to sense. And then we have to note that now the output is going to be the negative output of the flip-flop because we want to have our output to be reversed. So when we are 
with a current value higher than the peak value, we want to have zero at the output. And when the current is below the value, value then we want to have one at the output. So we activate the switch here. So we need to take this as our main output. And then we can apply this to our back converter to implement the hysteresis control. Let's do a simulation to see that with this circuit everything is going to work well. Here we have our back converter. This is the sensor for the current through the inductor. So this voltage is sent here into the hysteresis comparator and we are injecting with these two voltage sources the values of IP and IV. So IP is 0.7 amperes, IV is 0.4 amperes. So the addition of both of them is 1.1 amperes divided by 2 is 0.55 and this value multiplied by 10 ohms means that we are getting at the output 5.5 volts. So let's do the simulation to see everything. We can measure, for example, the output voltage. So as we can see, we are reaching the value of 5.5 volts and we can add another pane and measure the current through the inductor so we can see how we start from zero so the current is increasing the switch is on and then we have several cycles and we reach a steady state operation very quickly so we can measure maybe also the peak value here so this is 0 0.7 amperes and also the value valley here so it's 0 0.4 we can maybe add another pane to see the output of the flip-flop, which is the signal uh, that controls the, the switch. So maybe we can put here two volts to see everything better. So in principle, we can see that everything is operating well. So now we can go ahead and create our new component for LTS Vice. So this is the implementation in LTSPICE of our new hysteresis controller. This is the symbol that we are going to use. We have three inputs here. This is for the value of the peak current. This is for the valley current. And this is for the current through the inductor itself. And then we have the output corresponding to the switch. And we are also adding the negative signal also because in some cases it can be interesting depending on the type of switch that we are going to use to implement the uh, converter. So this is the circuit that we have seen before and this is the description in LTS Vice. So as we can see it's very simple, we need only two comparators and one flip-flop and with this we have everything. If you are not familiar with how to implement new components in LTS Vice, please take a look at these videos, LTS Vice number 3 and LTS Vice number 4. And as usual, if you want to save time, you can go to my website. This is the link and then go to resources. Here in other LTS Vice components, you can download this new controller, my hysteresis controller for LTS Vice. So now we can test our new controller. Here is our new controller, my hysteresis controller. So note that we have no other parameters, only the peak value, which is an input here, and the valley value of the current another input here. Here we inject the current through the inductor which is sensed here with this sensor. So if we do a right click here on the component we can see that we have no other parameters. We are selecting again 0.7 for the peak and 0.4 for the valley. So the output voltage is going to be 5.5 volts. We can run the simulation and check the output voltage so we can see that we get this value. We can maybe add another pane and see the current through the inductor. 
and we can also measure the peak level and the valley level. So we can see that everything is operating well. We can maybe check the uh, switching frequency that we are getting at a steady state. We place one cursor here and the other one here. So we get a frequency of 83.1 kHz. Even we can do a test, another test, and increase the output voltage. If we put here, for example, 0 0.6, then the average value between these two values is 0 0.65. So this multiplied by 10, which is the load resistance in ohms, we will get here 6.5 volts. So let's run the simulation again and check this. So the output voltage, as we can see, is 6.5 approximately. And we can check the switching frequency that we are getting now. So let's use the cursors for this. A cursor at this point and the other cursor at this point. So now we are operating at a switching frequency, which is 223.1 kHz. Let's see very quickly what happens if we do a step up transient, for example, in the peak value of the current. So here we are going to start with 0 0.7 amperes as the peak current, and then we are going to increase to 1 ampere at the instant of 3 milliseconds. And we are keeping constant the valley current to 0 0.4. So let's run the simulation and see what happens. This is the output voltage. Let's add another pane here to see the current level and also to see the current through the inductor. So we can see how at this point we are increasing the peak value. So the voltage at the output is increasing. At this point, we are getting something like 5.4 volts, and then we get like 7 volts at the output. We can see the difference in the peak-to-peak -peak level of the ripple, because at the end, the valley uh, current is constant. And also, we have a change in the switching frequency. Here, the switching frequency is higher, and then here, the switching frequency is smaller. We can check this maybe here. Uh, we can use the cursors and the switching frequency here is 83.4 kilohertz, while after the transient we get a switching frequency of 42.2 kilohertz. So this is also interesting. Maybe in a future video we can analyze and dynamically the back converter and the hysteresis control to see how these evolutions are obtained and also to obtain the dynamic response of the converter. Finally, it's interesting also to note that with this controller we can implement a type of critical mode control. For this, we only have to select a value for the valley current, which is very small, nearly zero. For example, here we selected one milliampere. And then we can use the peak value as control parameter. We have selected here, for example, 1.2 ampere. So with this, the average value is half of the peak value, so it's 0 0.6 times the resistance, 10 ohms, we will get 6 volts at the output. So let's run the simulation and see the output voltage. So we can see that we are getting something like 6 volts at the output. We can add another pane to check the current through the inductor. So now the valley value is almost zero. We can measure the valley here in green and also the peak value here, which is 
And then we can change this value here. For example, if we select uh, one ampere, then we will have five volts at the output. If we run the simulation, then we will see that we are getting at the output five volts as expected. So this is an interesting controller and we will be using this new controller in future videos to show the applications of this type of control. Well, this concludes this presentation. I want to thank you for watching this video and following the channel. Please let me know if you have any comment or question and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.